It's Saturday morning, October 2nd, 1993, and we're in MacArthur, Ohio, for the annual Enduro Riders Association Baby Burr Dual Sport National Trail Ride. Some of the latecomers are still signing up. Outside at the riders meeting, the air is a little bit chilly and there's a light rain that's just started to fall just before dawn. Last minute tech inspection. These bikes have got to be quiet. The Endura riders provide a gas truck to haul everybody's fuel so that they don't have to make their own arrangements. And you can see the rain's coming down pretty good. And here comes the first group of riders ready for the start. The covered bridge that they traditionally use for the start provides a nice little shelter on a rainy day like today. Bill Kepner, one of the promoters of the event, asked at the riders meeting how many people intended to take the easy routes today in view of the bad weather. Only two people raised their hands. That sort of uh, sets the tone for this event as being a real hardcore trail ride. Uh, this one is really much more like a B-Rider Enduro than it is a dual sport ride. And here we are in the first wood section. Even though it started raining early this morning, it hasn't rained real hard and the weather's been dry for quite some time before this weekend. So as you can see on the trails, even though it's raining, it's not very muddy. Since this is only the first weekend in October, you can see the leaves in South Central Ohio haven't started to turn yet. The 1994 Baby Burr is scheduled for the third weekend in October and there should be a lot more fall color. This particular trail that we're looking at right now is an easy enduro trail that has been used on Enduro Riders Association Enduros in the past. If some of these scenes seem to be dark, that's because it was very dark on this particular day. The clouds were very thick, and back in the woods where you had the additional shelter of the trees, it was dark. Sometimes you can see the headlights shining on the ground.
although you can't see the rain falling it is raining right now the riders though providing they were dressed warm enough were having a very pleasant time because the trail at this point was just a little bit tacky These trails are easy enough that even the biggest dual sport bikes are having a pretty easy time. And here comes one of our cameramen, Carl Sukumel. You can see the jackets are starting to look a little bit wetter and the course is getting a little bit slicker.
We've moved on to another section now. This one has a little off-camber turn there. This particular section is an old township road. The Enduro Riders Association has township maps that date back to the 1940s. And there are many township roads that have not been used for many years and have never been maintained, but they're kept on the books so that they still get tax money to support them. The Enduro Riders locate these roads through the old maps and these are perfectly legal to ride on because these are technically public roads. Many of the trails on the Baby Burr are these old township roads. You can see the rain's taking its toll on the trail. It's getting just a little bit muddier. Well, looks like this rider's been down once or twice already. You can see the course is getting a little bit muddier, and this is more of an uphill section than what it looks like. And we're coming out to the road. This is a nice place to stop and regroup if you got separated from some of your friends. The weather report said the rain would let up about noon, but so far there's no end in sight. When it's kind of slick, you can't afford to be distracted by a camera.
about 11 o'clock now and we're in another section. This one's got a fairly long hill. It's not really very steep, but remember, it's been raining all morning. These early riders aren't having too much trouble, but they're keeping up a little bit of momentum. This guy is determined to go right up the middle. I was here for over half an hour taking pictures, and believe me, this is the most difficult way to get up this hill. While he's stuck, other people are just motoring right on around. Here's Bob Aldred heading up the hill on an old Yamaha with trials type tires. He's not on his 1969 Greaves today because it's down for repairs. As you see him right here, Bob's already twisted his knee and I think that's the last we'll see of him this weekend. The rain's picking up and it's starting to get muddy out here. Our cameras are getting soaked, so I think we're going to have to call it a day. Sunday morning is just as nice as Saturday was nasty. It's fairly cool, but it's clear, sun's coming up, it's going to be a beautiful day. Here we are at the first big hill on Sunday, and there's a lot of action here. About halfway up, there's an exposed tree root that causes a lot of trouble for riders right there. Of course, some of them can't even get to the tree root. There's somebody detouring around. Remember, the ground was still damp from yesterday, so the leaves were wet, and there was a little bit of mud right on the top. But the people who took the alternate route didn't seem to have any trouble cutting through that and getting right on up the hill. Now, here's a guy that's got some momentum. He just motors right on up over the top. As usual, this hill is a lot steeper than what it looks like in the video. It seems like videos never really show how steep hills actually are. Oops! Center punched him in the rear end there. It's not really muddy here at all, but rocks and tree roots seem to destroy traction. 
Of course, when you're not sitting on your bike, you don't get very much traction anyway. Most of these early riders are the ones that like to maintain a brisk pace and they typically don't have too much trouble with this hill. Of course, when you don't have any momentum, the least little obstacle stops you. Here comes a rider on a very old Yamaha Enduro. And he's not going very fast, but he does pretty good. He almost makes it up there without stopping. Starting to get a little traffic jam here. And watch out. Hey, this is not a contest to see if we can center punch a cameraman. As soon as you get a few people stuck, things start to get a lot more interesting. Oops, there's another rider in the way. I don't know where they came from, but we have a few spectators, too. <laughs> this rider on the KDX 200 gives up, doesn't even make it over the route. He's going to try to go around. But then here comes another guy on a Yamaha XT, pretty conservative bike, motors right on around. Almost makes it over the top, but he's blocked by another rider. Well, several riders have found the detour now. 
and they're taking a nice easy route around. Meanwhile, there's a group over here that's uh, pushing and huffing and puffing and struggling here. Some other riders coming down to help their friends. Now that the traffic's cleared out a little bit, we've got some people that are going to make a run for it. Well, we got another traffic jam. Well, this is one way to get up the hill and get plenty of exercise. Meanwhile, over at the detour, there are a bunch of people coming through here and motoring right along. Back on the main hill, if you can maintain your momentum and keep right on the line, this is a pretty easy hill. But you can see how quick you can get crossed up and get off the trail. If you get stopped and have to step off on the wrong side, it can be real awkward. Oh, here comes John Albaugh. He got himself a Suzuki. He used to have an old Honda. Here come a couple more riders. Oh, he's getting in trouble before he even gets to the route. And there's another one. And here comes another guy. Look at that nice jump. Puts those other fellows to shame. This guy gets real crossed up and then crashes. And hurts his leg. Fortunately, he was okay and got going later. Shortcuts aren't always so short. Here we are back at the detour again. Excuse me, sir, the trail's this way. Would you like to go up this hill? This is my heart. Can you get up this hill? Go to turn right a little,
we've got some real stylists coming up the hill. Look at this guy wheelie under perfect control. And look at this feets up style. Great body English. Look at that. got a lot of people wearing rain jackets today but I think they're wearing those just to keep warm Well, we're up at the top of the hill now, and a lot of people are stopping here to take a break and regroup. Here we have a few riders coming out of that big wood section. A little bit of paved road, give them an opportunity to rest up. Here come Ted and Robin Fisher. We'll see more of them later. Here we have a group of riders. What are they waiting for? Well, they're waiting their turn to go up the big rocky ravine. As usual, the hill doesn't look near as steep as it actually is on video. Looks sort of difficult, doesn't it? But here comes somebody who takes a really good line. You can see they motor right on up through there. Let's go on up in the ravine and take a look. You can see on the right hand on your right hand side there's a ledge there and if you can stay on that ledge you can stay out of the rocks and you can make pretty good time and keep your momentum up. But it's easy to slip off the ledge. So throttle control is really important. Here come Ted and Robin Fisher. And they would have just gone right up there if they hadn't gotten hung up on the foot pegs of this other guy's bike. You'll see Ted and Robin at most dual sport rides passing solo riders, even in the advanced sections. Let's take a minute and talk to them about the ravine. I think, I think we just kind of got stuck and I said, I'll just get off and let him go. I mean, it was, it was probably not even a bad section. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't. It was not a bad section at all. You talking about the ravine, or will we pile drive that guy? No, I'm talking about the ravine. Yeah, <laughs> oh. no, the 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 rocky section. We didn't. We I didn't walk just, on that. Just not pushed a little bit push. to get him going again, but uh, hopped yeah. back on and not uh, too much. off we went. Watch how Ted handles this Honda XL650. He's on solid rock here, so he doesn't have much traction, but he just lifts that front end, carries that thing right around. Robin gets right back on. 
if you've got the power and the suspension, having that extra weight back there can really help with traction. At times like this, it's always a good idea to have your gas turned on. Because if you don't, you wind up stopping in an inconvenient place. As you can see, the problem here is not that the hill is so steep, it's the fact that the base here is almost all rock rather than dirt, and there's nothing to get any traction on. And when you combine that with the loose rocks that you hit with your tires and bounce around, you lose momentum, and then you can't make it over the really slick spots. Here's a real unusual bike. It looks like a Suzuki with the uh, with the yellow, but it's actually a Swedish Husaberg. Here's one of several women that I saw out on the trail. She's having a little bit of trouble in the ravine, but remember, she is here in the advanced section and not trying to just detour around on the road. At a time like this, it's a good thing to have friends nearby.
keep an eye on this rider. He not only clears all the obstacles in the ravine, he also clears most of the people out of the way that are on up here. Here comes another one of the female riders. Lower back! Lower back! Down in that, that hole! And get a run at it! I want to go up the side here! This is fine! Just pull back a little bit further and get a run at it! After the ravine, there's a shorter but steeper hill that's a telephone line cut. You can see the wire up above. Women had their share of trouble on this hill. But they shouldn't feel too bad because there were plenty of men having trouble too. I think I'll rest here and wait for the sweeper to pick it up. And this woman almost makes it over the top. These big rocks are tough. Those big rocks stopped a lot of people. You just bounce around so much you get off your line and get stopped.
don't know what's worse. Going down and helping and walking back up or riding up. Over near where the gas truck was located, there's a nice creek crossing. After the creek crossing, there's a nice fast trail with a big, long, straight uphill. This is part of an old township road. On around the bend there, uh, the hill continues on a fairly steep grade for a long time. But you can see it's nice and open and you can move right along. Speaking of moving right along, here's Ted and Robin Fisher.
Here come Mark Hyde and Dick Burleson. After that long hill, it's back down the ravine again. Of course, it's a lot easier going down than it is going up. Sometimes going downhill isn't quite as easy as you might think. All you have to do is have your front wheel hit the wrong side of about two or three rocks in a row, and you just 
just go right on down. to yet another wood section. This is a nice winding trail, but it's pretty clear you can make good time through it. Well, this is the end of the trail ride, but stay tuned because we're going to be talking with Ted and Robin Fisher and we'll pay a visit to Enduro Champion Dick Burleson. Okay, I have with me Ted and Robin Fisher, whom you've seen in all of our videos riding double on a Honda 650 and most of the time going very fast. Would you like to tell us how you got into this and, and how you talked her into doing this? Well, we, I've been riding probably for, uh, since I'm about 12 years old, so a good 20, 25, probably 25 years or so, something like that. Raced motocross for about 10, 10 years, uh, was pretty good at that. And uh, just started trail riding. She's got a bike, she doesn't ride a whole lot. She likes to ride double more, but uh, just tried it one time down Land Between Lakes is the first place we tried it and rode that time and uh, she swore for the whole 364 days that she wouldn't do it again next year and then the 365th day she did it again and pretty much <laughs> pretty much we've done it since then we've done uh, well I don't know probably about four or five them. yeah probably about eight probably all together went to uh, Loretta Lynn's this year and last did we go last this year anyway we've been to quite a few of them Loretta and uh, Lynn's Blackwater Blackwater yeah between the legs about yeah. five times here yeah. three times how yeah. many times did you actually get off and walk today it wasn't very once many, I'll bet. Yeah. yeah once I walked across the ravine and that okay. was it yeah just yeah. one, yeah. one would, time would you like to tell us what happened at the ravine I think I think we just kind of got stuck and I said I'll just get off and let him go. I mean it was it was probably not even a bad section. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't it was not a bad You're section at all. You talking about the ravine or we pile drive that guy? No, I'm talking about the ravine. <laughs> yeah, no, the 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 rocky section we didn't we I didn't walk just, on that. Just not pushed a little bit Push. to get him going again, but uh, hopped yeah. back on and uh, off we went.
Yeah. So. Yeah, he, he, if I want to walk, he won't let me. <laughs> I'll say, I'll get off. I'll be more than happy to get off, and he won't let me. So um, I have to just hold on. you ride a Honda 650, what is it? It's an XR650L. XR650L. Yeah, the 650L, yeah. We've had it. We, in fact, the last year, the ride up here last year was the first ride. Picked it up that night. Changed the tires when we got up here that, that Saturday morning. So uh, it's what, been a lot of fun. What else have you done to set it up for riding double? I know she put an extra little seat yeah, well, on that, the that's, back. Yeah, that's been the last two rides. That, probably, that helps yeah. her uh, yeah, helps a lot there. Yeah, definitely helps the tailbone. It actually got too much foam in it now because yeah. it pushes her up too far. But that's yeah. all, all. Flip all, the foot pegs. <laughs> Yeah. Have you changed the gearing the or uh, no. suspension? No, just no. Really, haven't done anything other than the uh, gearing. It would be better if it had a little bit lower gearing and be a little mm -hmm. bit better. Just gets a little tight. The uh, clutch is about smoked right now. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not in real good shape. But uh, no, nothing else. But actually, turn the foot pegs. The foot peg mounts are. Uh, you take the foot pegs and flip them around from side to side, and it moves them down. Down. Moves them down and ba down and back because. We better rode up here the first year. Way. She can't put mm -hmm. her feet up on as, as far, so it works a lot yeah. better that way. So I hold on a lot with my legs. Do you ever stand up? <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> only, only when we hit something too fast. Yeah, I stood up a couple times today. Yeah, yeah. 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 unexpectedly. I notice mostly you just scoot up as tight as you can and hold on real good. Yeah. So yeah, I just got to lock tight. Yep. Hold and squeeze. Yeah, that's why I said I hold on as much with my legs as I do with my arms. Well, I know a lot of people have really enjoyed seeing you out there on the trail. Yeah, we have and, fun. And uh, you put a lot of solo riders to shame. Yeah, we have fun. Well, they say I'm, a, I'm, I'm crazy or they don't know what's wrong, but uh, it's screw, fun. That's screw loose. I ask myself what's wrong with me, too, as we're flying through the woods. Yeah. But when it's all said and done, I, I, it's a good time. Well, so. it's, you don't have to be near as crazy if you've got a good driver. Oh, yeah, I trust him. I, I'd rather be behind him than driving myself. So yeah. so I, I trust him. He's he's. Okay, well, we He's look good. forward to seeing you out on the trail. Right. It was really Thanks. nice to talk to you and meet nice both of you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Norm Kern from Kern Video Productions, and with me is Dick Burleson, uh, who has won the National Enduro Championship many times and has done many things and seen a lot of changes in the world of motorcycling. Dick, would you like to tell us a little bit about how you got started in bikes and how your career developed? Well, uh, yeah, I started riding in 66 a long time ago. <laughs> conned my parents into letting me get an S90 Honda to go to work. Well, you know, getting to work was like going through the dunes and along the beach. I lived in Michigan. And uh, so I, right off the bat, I started riding in the woods. And that's just, I like, like doing that. And uh, I was real lucky uh, when I went to school in Ann Arbor to meet up with a guy, Jack, uh, John, Jack Leto was his name, who eventually ended up working for John Penton at Husky. And I went to work for Husky. and. And uh, uh, the whole thing just kind of developed because uh, John was involved in six days in Enduros. Of course, he was a former Enduro champion. And, and I started riding six days, and then I started riding Enduros. And, and yeah, just got lucky a couple of times, you know, and mm -hmm. won a few races. And uh, How many times did you win the championship? Eight years. That's a little more than <laughs> luck, Dick. <laughs> yeah, 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 a lot of luck. Yeah. So I, I did that for uh, eight years, and then in 81 was my last year of the National Enduro Championship. And then I, was, I, was, I had been working for Husqvarna for, for all that time and continued to work for Husky until uh, 80, let's see, what is it, 88, I think, mm -hmm. January 88, as team manager and I was technical manager, product development and everything. I was managing all of the technical technical areas and racing departments at Husky and product development stuff. Uh, at that time, I went when the company was bought. I I decided to go out on my own, move back to Michigan, and uh, started doing riding schools. And and as a consultant, I'm an engineer and a, a consultant in the motorcycle business. And and one of the things that I've really learned in that time is especially in my state where we have a really good organized trail system. We got like 1,500 miles oh, yeah. of marked trail and it's really well done. But uh, in order to use that marked trail, you have to have a, uh, an ORV sticker. And the way it's worked out, I mean, the way it is now in Michigan is, is that you've got a section of trail that you can ride with your ORV sticker. And then there's some gravel road. Well, technically you can't ride on that gravel road with an ORV. Okay, so that means you can only ride that one section. You can't hook to the next section 
without having a street yeah, licensed a street vehicle. Yeah. So, so I, I, I was doing some, some, develop, some uh, promotional work for Honda and started getting involved in some dual sport stuff. And it was really, really obvious instantly that if I had a dual purpose bike that was street legal but dirt, dirt worthy, I could ride those ORV trails and ride any two track road. I'm, I'm talking any road that you can, that you can even in your imagination go on a two wheel drive pickup truck. So every place they go, the deer hunters go and all that, I can go totally legally on my dirt bike now as long as it's street licensed. And so what it did by having that, it, a, a, a dual purpose bike, then it, it like opened up the woods to the way it was when I was a kid. I mean, I have almost the same access as I had back then because I've got a, I've got a, you know, a nice, quiet, legal bike. And uh, so I, since that kind of, since I moved to Michigan, I really got involved in, in four strokes and in and, and, and the noise issue. Of course, I'm working with Dirt Rider magazine and we're really pushing for quiet bikes because, yeah, you know, we want to have places to ride. And uh, yeah, it's just, oh, there's a puppy. Been really involved in that. So the, the, the thing is that's different from when I was a real young, when I was young and getting involved to it is back then you could ride kind of anywhere. Nobody really cared. Yeah. Well, now people care because we've sort of abused it and there's a lot more people. That's another thing that's different. There's just a lot more people. And, and so we've got to kind of take care of our neighbors uh, and figure out how to get along with them. So the, now, if you want to, if you want to have access to the woods, you you gotta, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you gotta take care. You gotta be quiet and not roost over private property and all that stuff. You know? What about the, uh, what about the motocross racers' philosophy that you stick a light on and a, a license plate and uh, and uh, use your race bike, which is much better for trails, they say, than a dual purpose bike. Well, yeah. I, Certainly a, a bike that weighs 220 pounds is generally more fun than one that weighs 250 pounds. Uh, you can't argue with some, some fundamental physics. But the problem is, is that those bikes, there, there's virtually nothing you can do to make them quiet enough. And they don't, have, they don't really have proper lights and they don't have turn signals and they don't have horns and mirrors and all the good stuff. So that they're only really making it worse for... The, for themselves, mm -hmm. by having the, having those bikes, by doing that, they make it really worse for not only themselves but but us too, because it's the really loud motocross bikes that are that are hurting in the woods. I'll t see, one of yeah. the things that's a technical problem that the the sound level as it's measured is a 20-inch test at half maximum power RPMs. Mm -hmm. Well, all of the two-stroke and all two all the two-stroke bikes today have an adjustable exhaust valve. Yeah. And and that almost every one of them, the RPMs that that opens is at above the RPMs where the noise test is. Mm -hmm. So when the noise test is taken, you got they got this valve that's blocking the exhaust, and they're pretty darn quiet. Yeah. You take them out here in the woods, and they go, Rah! and then they get that loudness at the high mm -hmm. RPM, which is above where the noise test is. So they can fake the noise test, but in the practical, in the real world, they're too loud, and that's yeah. that's what turns other people off yeah. to, to, to having motorcyclists out there. And, and, and really, the Forest Service figures, well, heck, we had an 82 decibel level that they're supposed to beat, and they're still getting complaints for noise. We'll have to make it 80 or whatever. Yeah. So it's going it, to make it even worse for the rest of us, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you think a quiet bike is more fun to ride? Uh, there's two parts to that. One is, is that... A bike that you have a place to ride is more fun than a bike that you don't have a place to ride. <laughs> and and two, you know, for me, if I ride a real like a loud bike, which I more or less refuse to do anymore, my ears ring for days. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm really they they just ring bad, and yeah, and I, it's cumulative. Yeah, 20 I years. find it makes you tired it, sooner. It, well, yeah. If nothing else. Okay. Try and try and do your try and do some work in your office with some Metallica turned up wide open. You know, yep. just that noise is good. Well, some guys, uh, sorry, so if you like Metallica. <laughs> but you, the point is, is that some loud noise, it, it really just it, it detracts from your from your thinking and, and just it wears me out. You know, I've raced, I've raced at Baja a number of times and, I, and, and one time a guy built my, built our bike in Vegas and that thing was so loud. I hated that motorcycle. Couldn't hardly ride it because it was just, it just drove me crazy with all that noise. And I had the worst headache for 
for like weeks that I've ever had. Mm. And so I, yeah, forget it. So, like I say, it's just more. It for me, I enjoy it a lot more if they're quiet, and. And certainly, I really like riding places. And and if we if we got loud bikes, we can't ride there. What's the point? Yeah. So, the thing is, is if ever if all of them are quiet, then it's the same. I mean, a, a, a DR 250 has probably got more horsepower than my Husky 250 that I won a national enduro championship <laughs> on in '74. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So if if every played if everybody played the games the same, yeah. What's the yeah. difference? And then besides. You know these things aren't races anyway. We had, Mar I mean, Mark and I's bikes are ultra quiet, and we had at least as fun as ever anybody else did here today, yeah. and maybe more. Uh, tell us what your new business ventures and things are. Uh, well, I have. When I became self-employed, uh, I, I started Dick Burleson Sports, and and what what we do is uh, riding schools up in Michigan or. Wherever I've done a bunch, of, I just got back from Hawaii. I did one in Hawaii. That was a deal. That's, That's a, nice a tough idea. job there, huh? And we produced some some videos on how to ride off-road motorcycles. Three of those, and then I'm also doing a lot of work as a as a consultant to a company called Thumper Racing down in Texas, making four-stroke accessory stuff. And, and really, I'm responsible for all the product development for that company. And and our th our thinking is to make the bikes more fun to use. Uh, perform better and still be quiet and mm -hmm. and 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 for eastern type riding not for the not for wide open desert stuff yeah. so so we're making yeah, a lot of big bore kits and muffler pieces and mm -hmm. things to make the throttles easier and some really awesome foot pegs and uh, just a little stuff that makes the bike a lot more fun to ride yeah, that's what we're doing and so that's taking up a real lot of time these days because we're trying to do it trying to make product for all the different four strokes that are available you know well, Dick, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. Well, hey, it's it was a pleasure. my pleasure, and I really had a lot of fun today riding. It was great. The weather was great, and I, I really got to say that this was a really a good day, good mix of trail and, and dirt and gravel roads and some street, and yeah, just a really, really good day. Yeah. had a lot of fun.